Hi guys, it's Alexa from Alexa Loves Books and today I will be bringing you my March book haul. Now, I tried not to acquire as many books this time around, but at the end of the month I kind of got into the mood to read graphic novels so you'll be seeing quite a few of those. Anyway, let's get started. First, I will be showing you the stuff that I got from the publishers, which I'm super super excited about. The Wander Society by Carrie Smith. She is the author of Rectus Journal, which I also really liked. And basically this is a book about wandering and how it's, why it's important, how to do it, suggestions for doing it. And I'm very, very excited about this one because it's so cute. It's just, it's not like a novel read, like a typical novel with a story. It's more like a nonfiction type thing. And I'm really excited because Rachel and I are planning to do something for this for books in real life. So you guys are going to have to wait and see how that goes. And it's just really cute. So I'm excited about this. It is published by Penguin Books. Thank you so much. Next, I got this book because I participated in the blog excerpt tour and it is Chasing Crazy by Kelly Siskind and this is basically set in New Zealand and is a new adult romance and I really like my new adult romances when they are sort of travel-ish travel or there's travel in the story and this is one of them it's basically about a girl named Nina and a boy named Sam and they meet along the way when they're both traveling in New Zealand. This book comes from, I think it's Forever Yours, that's the publishing imprint, so thank you very much to my friend Tara for contacting me to do the tour and for making sure to pass my info along so I got a copy of the book. The next book I got is something I'm really, really excited about and I cannot wait to read it and I'm so grateful to the people at Amulet Books for sending it to me and it is the Haters by Jesse Andrews. I really, really adored Me and Earl and Dying Girl, and I'm so excited to read this one. And I really like the box. It opens. And the arc. It's sort of like an unboxing, but not really. It's so. I just. I, oh, I just. I find this cover so clever. Anyway, this is about a guy named Wes and his friend Corey, and they're basically excited about Jazz Camp but it turns out to not be what they think it's gonna be. They eventually meet a girl named Ash and then they decide to team up and go on a road trip and that is all I know about it. I've heard it's very different from me and Earl and the Dying Girl, which I'm totally prepared for, but I am very much looking forward to reading this one and I will also be hosting a giveaway for it at some point this month on my blog, so watch out for that. And then I also received from the publisher And I Darken by Kirsten White and this is basically about a really kick-ass sounding princess named Leda. I think her name is Leda. Yeah, her name is Leda. And she is trying to find a way to protect herself and her brother as they are currently being held as hostages in the Ottoman courts. Actually, they weren't hostages. They're ac they actually got abandoned by their dad at the Ottoman courts. But things start to change when Leda meets the prince of the Ottomans and she and her brother suddenly find themselves at odds. And this just sounds amazing. I really love the fact that she's basically like a warrior princess and that she's protective of her brother. Two things that appeal to me in general when I hear them in a synopsis. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this and it's being published by Delacorte Press. The next book I got unsolicited in the mail but it sounds pretty damn good and it is Steeplejack by A.J. Hartley and I got sent this one from Tortine and it's basically about a girl named Angla Tsutonga and she basically repairs chimneys, towers, everything in the city of a land that's sort of like a Victorian South Africa. I believe she starts investigating a murder because her apprentice gets murdered and she starts looking into it and she discovers a lot of things and it's gonna be one of those dystopian type novels where she realizes things are sort of wrong in their society and figures out what to do about them or that's what I think it's gonna be. Anyway, it sounds really great and I am looking forward to checking it out. Excitingly enough, I actually got this book for review like a couple of months ago and the publishers were generous enough to send me a finished copy of The Incredible Adventures of Cinnamon Girl. I actually talked about this one in my March wrap up which I will link to down below but basically, I really adored this novel from Melissa Keel. I love the main character, love the secondary characters, thought that this coming of age story was really, really well done. And the finished copy is very pretty. It is 
let's look at the illustrations because that's something I was talking about in the wrap up. Oh, they're still in there. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm so excited to own this. Thank you so much, Peachtree Publishers, for sending along a finished copy of this book. I am also going to be reviewing a book by a YouTuber, and that book is Dream House by Martia Bissonin. I hope I said that right. I know I should be able to say her. I know her first name is Martia. I don't remember how to say her last name. But, but, I am pretty excited about this book. It sounds very interesting. It's basically about a girl named Amethyst who is invited to stay in a house with a couple named the Blooms. But then when she wakes up the next morning, they've all disappeared, or they both disappeared, and she doesn't know what to do. So she's trying to figure it out. And I, it's a really short book. And I really love this cover and the premise sounds really interesting so I am definitely looking forward to checking it out and I will be sure to let you guys know what I think. So thank you so much Keywords Press for sending this along for me. I also got in the mail another unsolicited book and that is Defender by Graham McNamee. And this one I really have no idea what it's about so we're gonna have to see. Tagline says never tell. So they call her tiny but really she's a giant. Tyne Greer is six foot six and plays high school basketball, hoping it will be her ticket out of the slum. She lives in a rundown building called the Zoo, where her father is the superintendent. One day, when she's helping out in the basement, she discovers a crack in the wall of an empty room, and sealed up in the wall is a girl's body. Horrified, she runs to get her dad, but after he goes to take a look, he comes back and tells Tyne that nothing's there. No girl, no body. She must be seeing things. Okay. How creepy does that sound? It sounds very creepy. It reminds me of that horror movie where all the bodies were hidden in the house and now I'm suddenly creeped out. But I will probably give this one a shot and if any of you have read it or plan to read it, do let me know what you thought so I can also hear more about it because I really haven't heard nothing about it. And this one is gonna be published by Wendy Lamb Books. Next we have Dreamers Often Lie by Jacqueline West. And this is being published by, who's published? Dial books, okay, dial books. And the only thing I know about this is that it's trippy and it's got Shakespeare inspired influences in it and I know my friend Betty read it and she thought it was very interesting. I'm looking forward to reading it just so that she and I can discuss what it's about. Plus, this, the way this cover looks is very eerie. And I don't know, I just, I, I just say Shakespeare and it'll pull me in. So thanks for sending this. I also have Billy and Me by Giovanna Fletcher and let's take a moment to admire this cover because it is absolutely gorgeous and I completely love it and I also don't know that much about it but it's ba I'm pretty sure it's a contemporary romance. So basically it is about a woman named Sophie May who lives in a small English village and works in a local coffee shop and, and lives with her mom. But then a famous actor comes to town to play Mr. Darcy in a new adaptation of Pride and Prejudice and basically Sophie's life is changed forever. And that just sounds really charming and really cute and I really hope I enjoy this one. So thank you very much. I believe this is published by St. Martin's Press, yes. It's Thomas Dunn Books, St. Martin's Press. Thank you very much for sending this along to me. I also received a finished copy of a book that I thoroughly enjoyed and that is Walk the Edge by Katie McGarry, and this is published by Harlequin Teen. I read this one, I think, two months ago, and I really enjoyed it. I think that it's another great addition to Katie McGarry's new series. Even though I did feel like some parts of it were less developed than others, I overall enjoyed it because I love the two main characters so very much. I actually have a full review for this on my blog, and I will link to that down below if you are interested. And the last thing I got from the publisher, which I'm very, very excited to finally own, is the special anniversary edition of The Book Thief by Marcus Duzak, and I'm so excited. I read The Book Thief a couple of years ago, and it was one of the most incredible stories I've ever written. I loved the unique perspective, I loved the way literacy plays into the story, and it was just amazing. I'm overdue for a reread, so I will have to read this pretty edition now that I own it. And this is published by Alfred A. No. So, I also managed to borrow another bunch of books from the library. I actually had to return a few of the other ones that I borrowed before unread. But anyway, that's the story for another day. All of the stuff I borrowed this time are graphic novels. And the, these are all recommendations from my husband, from C at the Novel Hermit, and from friends on Twitter. Like, 
I'm sure you guys will recognize most of these, so I'm not really going to linger too long on what they're about. So the first thing I have is Death Note Volume 1, and it's basically about this guy who finds a notebook um, called, or well, called or known as the Death Note, and any human who has their name written in the book dies. <laughs> so basically, he intends to rid the world of evil by using the Death Note notebook. I'm looking forward to getting into this one because the premise sounds so interesting. I haven't read a lot of manga in like recent years or at all, so this should be fun. And then I picked up Fun Home by Alison Bechdel, and this has actually been turned into a Broadway musical. My friend C is the one who recommended this one, and I don't know too much about it, but I think it's actually nonfiction, and it's based on the author's relationship with her father. So that should be interesting. I know Maki really liked this one as well. So I am looking forward to picking it up. Also on C's recommendation, I picked up The Runaways Volume 1 Pride and Joy. And this is by Brian K. Vaughn. Yep, I think it's by Brian K. Vaughn. And again, don't really know much about it, but I assume it's about a bunch of runaways. And Brian K. Vaughn is also the author of Saga, which I read the first volume and really enjoyed. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, yeah, it should be fun. Okay, let me see what it's about. Okay, it's about a group of 16 who actually discover their parents are all powerful supervillains. So they run away from home determined to, you know, go against the grain and make sure to turn their evil legacy into something good. So that sounds like so much fun and I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy the series. So can't wait! Also, a C recommendation, Anya's Ghost by Vera Broskull. I really just like the art style of this one. That's really mostly the reason I ended up picking it up. I don't know anything about it except that C recommends it and I listen to her when she tells me to read things. And the next graphic novel I picked up was Amulet, the first volume, book one, The Stonekeeper by Kazu Kibu Kibushi. And I have seen this one a lot. I've always thought about picking it up but never taken the plunge, so I finally did this time. And it's basically about Emily, Naveen, and their mom, and they move to a new house. But at the new house, their mom is kidnapped by some strange creature, and so these two have to go and save her, and that just sounds fantastic. It sounds like a more middle grade graphic novel type story, and I just think it sounds really fun. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I think, I believe Riley of Riley Marie really enjoys them, so I'm hoping I will too. See recommendation coming up, and that is I Kill Giants by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken Nimura. Don't know anything about this one, trust C's opinion, and I'll probably read it. If you read it, let me know. Lumberjanes by Noelle Stevenson and a couple of other authors, let's see. Noelle Stevenson and Grace Ellis. It's illustrated by Brooke Allen. The cover is so cute. That's actually the real reason why I picked this one up. <laughs> Uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about it and say they enjoy it, and I hope I do too. I don't know anything about it, except that I really like the cover. <laughs> That's it. And here's a popular one. I'm not even going to need to talk about what this one's about because you guys already probably have seen this one. And it's Miss Marvel, the first volume, No Normal. And this is written by G. Willow Wilson and illustrated by Adrian Alfona. And I'm looking forward to reading about Miss Marvel. And the last graphic novel I picked up from the library is also a C recommendation, and it is Lady Killer by Joelle Jones and Jamie S. Rich, and it's basically about this woman who is the perfect homemaker and wife and mother, but she's also a killer. And I think that just sounds like such a weird situation, but also really fun, and I can't wait to read it. The books that I bought for myself are acquired by a subscription box or anything like that. So the first book I picked up, I actually got by a gift card, and that book is the Forbidden Wish by Jessica Curry. This one is an Aladdin retelling. It sounds really interesting. I loved her writing in her debut novel, Origin. It's a blurb by Sarah J Maas, in case you didn't see that. And I'm actually probably gonna have read this by the time this video goes up, so I hope I loved it. The next three things I acquired are all graphic novels that I picked up after going on a DC animated universe kick last weekend. And the first one is Robin, Volume 1, Reborn. And this one came recommended by my husband because he knows that I am interested in the Bat Family. He loves the Bat Family, so I wanted to read more comics centered around them, and this is one he recommended. The second one I picked up is Blackest Night, which I've actually already read and really, really loved. It is such a great story. I didn't know anything about it going into the story, and I feel like that actually affected the way I felt about it, so I'm not gonna say anything about the plot, but let me just tell you, it's probably one of the best superhero, graphic novel, comic 
type books that I have ever read and I really really loved it and I'm so happy we own it now. And lastly I picked up Nightwing Volume 1 Bloodhaven. I really, of all the Bat family, my favorite is Dick Grayson and I'm so excited to be reading about his adventures as Nightwing. The next book I picked up I also picked up as a gift card purchase and that is What You Always Wanted by Kristen Ray. This is one of the cutest YA contemporary romances I've read this year and I love that the author managed to integrate uh, classical movies into this story because the main character loves theater and performing in classical movies. It's such a great contemporary YA because it's light but it's also got a lot of substance and the characters really do experience a lot of growth throughout the course of the story. So you guys should check this one out and I will be linking to my review on the blog down below. This one I just couldn't resist. I had to buy it. It was just gonna happen. I can't even say sorry. And it's the paperback version of The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. I love this book. It's, it's probably my favorite from her. No, I don't know. I can't pick a favorite from her. But I really like what they did with the paperback cover. And this is the story of a girl named Paige who is still trying to figure out how to move on after her boyfriend has died. And with the help of her friends and some new guys that, you know, come into her life, um, she definitely manages to move forward with her life. And I really, really enjoyed this story and I really, really am excited to own this paperback copy. And to complete our collection, finally picked up volume one of Card Captor Sakura. And I haven't read the manga yet because we were always missing volume one, but now I can because we have it. I couldn't resist getting this because I needed to complete the collection so I could read it. Um, it's such a great anime too. If you guys haven't watched it, it's really, really cute. Again, with things I can't resist. I also picked up this pretty edition of The Secret Garden to add to my Frances Hodgson Burnett collection because apparently I have that now. I only started out collecting copies of A Little Princess, but somehow I magically started collecting The Secret Garden as well. And it's a classic, so I don't feel too bad about that. You guys are gonna laugh when you see this next book because it was in this month's Alcrate, but I had already gotten it previously, and it's in my last month's book haul. But anyway, it is The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. I talked about it in my last month's book haul, so I won't really say much about it now. Don't worry, the extra copy is going to a good home because one of my friends really wants to read it, so I ended up giving it to her. And the very last book that I've got to show you is A Tyranny of Petticoats, which is edited by Jessica Spotswood, and it's basically historical fiction short stories by various YA authors, which sounds kick-ass. I cannot wait to read it. Really, really excited about that, and I'm so looking forward to checking it out. On Kindle, oh, I picked up a couple of books on Kindle. I got Dancing at Midnight, oh, It's In His Kiss, to Sir Philip with Love, and one more book. I don't remember what it was, but I did get one more book, and they were all by Julia Quinn. And on Audible, I picked up Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I also picked up Harry Potter and Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. And I think that is it. I don't think I got anything else. Anyway, that is it for my haul for March. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the books that I got this month and if you've read any of them or are interested in any of them or want me to immediately read some of them, I would love it if you let me know in the comments. And all of my social media information is down below and I would love it if you hit thumbs up with this video for this video and if you subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys soon. Bye!